सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ दीक्षित अ कंसल्टेंट लैप्रोस्कोपिक एंड रोबोटिक सर्जन फ्रॉम न्यू डेली सो टूडे एज पर रिक्वेस्ट आई ब्रॉट अगेन अ वेरी स्मॉल टॉपिक एंड मेनी ऑफ यू मेनी ऑफ यू हैव कमेंटेड दैट यू वॉन्ट अ डिस्कशन ऑन यूरिथ्रल इंजरी एंड ब्लैडर ट्रामा सो दैट्स सेम टॉपिक दैट आई ब्रॉट फॉर यू सो विद ऑल द लव आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट दिस टॉपिक द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी टूडे इज ब्लैडर ट्रामा bladder trauma you know bladder trauma is a very common condition that we see and this is because of uh, frequent rtas so there are few important things that you need to understand for bladder trauma association if you talk about association the most common cause for this is fracture pelvis so fracture of the pelvis is the most frequent cause for this bladder trauma now one very important thing that you need to understand is that that bladder trauma how do we evaluate this bladder trauma and what are the important key points that we need to understand when we talk about the investigation how we investigate these bladder traumas so it is very 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 simple we investigation of choice is a cystogram and when we talk about cystogram it is nothing but a graphy of the bladder that is what cystogram is all about now cystogram is having two phases now this is what is very 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 important a cystogram is having a static phase and then we have a voiding phase why do we go for voiding and static both images so first we see the contrast filled inside a bladder and then we see how the contrast is behaving so if the bladder is contracting and the contrast is leaking out any place other than the urethra that means there is a significant pathology here so this is what is very 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 important now one more thing which i want to correlate before we start the approach to bladder trauma is bladder has two surfaces now this is what is very important so try to understand something like this so suppose if this is the bladder if this is the bladder and this is the urethra arising out of this so let us see this could be the uh, you can say uh, pelvic area now try to understand that this is how the peritoneal cavity is so this is how the peritoneal cavity is and we understand that this space is known as pouch of douglas and you can say that this is peritoneal cavity and when we talk about peritoneal cavity so thus we mean that one part of the bladder is having the peritoneal peri peritoneal lining you can go to my youtube videos where i have do where i have done total laparoscopic hysterectomy and then you see how i separate the peritoneum off from the bladder and then we go so th these are very important things even you can go to my tap videos where i do hernia so i go into a space which is extra peritoneal so you can see both the spaces here now if we comment on the space which is left over here that means the space between the pubic symphysis and the bladder what is this known as this is known as extra peritoneal extra peritoneal space now what is this extra peritoneal space better known as this is what is known as space of red zs now there are two important things that we need to understand that the damage to the bladder can be along the peritoneal cavity side also so it could be a perito intra peritoneal leakage of urine or it could be extra peritoneal injury also so how do we find them this is now we have to see so let us start about how do we or how shall we approach so approach approach to bladder injury so how do you uh, actually think about there could be a bladder injury in this patient so patient with trauma so patient with trauma and basically pelvic injury so if there is a pelvic injury or trauma and following that there is anuria remember when we talk about anuria anuria that means the urine is not coming now here there are two clues whether there is blood at meatus or blood at meatus is not there so the next thing that you need to check off is what about the concept of blood at meatus so blood at the meatus level so there could be a possibility yes there is a blood at meatus now the first priority if this is the first priority you have to rule out what injury first urethral injury because the blood is trickling down at the level of meatus so the first priority is rule out rule out urethral urethral injury now these are very very simple thing and how do you do this you go for rgu retrograde urethrogram this we will see 
later. This we'll see later, urethral injury. Now suppose if there is no blood at meters, but yes, there is anuria. So there is anuria with pelvic injury, blood, no blood at meters. However, students, this is not pathognomic. So there could be a possibility that some blood might have trickled down. So it's not always seen. But yes, blood at meters with anuria, the first priority is to rule out urethral injury. Now here you will go for cystogram. Now when we talk about cystogram, how do we do this? We push 250 cc of dye. We use urographin. This is the simplest drug. So retrograde, we push 250 cc of the contrast into the bladder. Now when you talk about the cystogram, the next thing is we take a static film. So static film is taken. And after you take a static film, then you take a voiding film. Now when you ask the patient to void, definitely you will have to check whether or not contrast is leaking out of the bladder or no. So when you talk, talk about voiding film, the next thing is, is there any contrast leak? Is there any contrast leak? So contrast leak out of bladder. So if the answer to this contrast leak outside the bladder is yes, this confirms, this confirms bladder injury. This confirms bladder injury. Now students, the next thing is, we need to answer, we need to understand one more very important thing. Now if it is bladder injury, whether it is intraperitoneal or no, or whether it is extraperitoneal. The next thing is, if there is no leakage of the contrast outside the bladder, rule out, rule out what? Urethral trauma now. So you need to rule out urethral injury. So there could be, this is a cat and mouse game. You have to search for the things. Now, when you want to confirm the bladder injury, then you have seen this voiding in static film. Now, when you want to confirm what part of bladder is injured, the next thing that you all have to understand is where the contrast is leaking. So the site, the site of contrast leak. So this is what is very, very, very important. If the site of contrast leak, it is into the pelvis, it is into pelvis, it is confined into the pelvis, that means it's an extra peritoneal injury. Now this is what is very, very, very important. So it's an extra peritoneal injury. Now if the contrast leaks into peritoneal cavity, now how will you come to know that it is into the peritoneal cavity? Try to understand there will be fullness of paracolic gutters. So fullness of paracolic gutters, paracolic gutters with contrast. This is what is ideal description that you actually get to see. So fullness of paracolic gutter with the contrast. And if this is the scenario, this confirms, this confirms intraperitoneal injury. Now both are very important because if you don't identify what injury is this, you will not be able to identify the management. But before I go to that, try to see this image. Now, if you see this image, there is a leakage of contrast. Try to understand. There is a leakage of contrast. So, this is the bladder. You can see a typical uh, light bulb-like glowing structure. So, this is a bladder and this is how the contrast is leaking. So, the contrast is confined to pubic symphysis. However, there is no contrast in this part. So this is what type of leak that we are looking into. This is what is extra peritoneal leak. So this is an extra peritoneal leak. Now this is what is very, 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 very important. The next is, the next is students, when this is a, this is a second film. When you get to see a bladder, so try to see, just a minute, okay. Okay, just see this. So if you see this contrast film, where is the contrast going? This is the bladder and this is the paracolic gutter. So there is contrast everywhere inside the paracolic gutter as well as the classical abdominal cavity. So this confirms the intraperitoneal injury. So there is extraperitoneal injury, there is intraperitoneal injury. Now both these things are very, 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 very important to understand. Why? Because their management will change. Now, do you know for extra peritoneal injury, that is the leakage into the space of red CS, we don't need anything. Just put a Foley's catheter. What will happen when you put a Foley's catheter? So when you put a Foley's catheter, the, cat the, the catheter will allow all the urine to move out 
and thus suppose if this was the bladder if this was a bladder and this was the injury and the moment you put a foley so let me put a foley for you so this is the foley that i have put for you and now automatically automatically this structure will what students this this bladder will what shrink in size and when it shrinks in size the the classical healing of the bladder will initiate try to use your common sense if you have a structure which you want to heal every day that is stretching relaxing stretching relaxing the healing will not happen so when you put a foley's catheter inside the bladder will collapse the injury size will become less now since the bladder movements are not there because whatever urine is produced is moved out of via foley's catheter so since the bladder movements are not there slowly and slowly slowly and slowly the granulation tissue will form and heal so if you don't put a foley's every day the bladder will stretch and this injury will keep on increasing size so if there is an intraperitoneal injury the classical management that you need to follow is foley's catheterization foley's catheterization for next 10 to 12 days you don't need to go for surgery but the problem is with the intraperitoneal leak when there is an intraperitoneal leak there will be chemical peritonitis of the abdomen which will cause bacterial contamination and hence bacterial peritonitis so if it is an intraperitoneal injury you need to go for urgent exploration so urgent surgical exploration followed by repair now there are two three questions that are frequently asked sir what repair do we use what suture do we use remember bladder is repaired in a single layer single layer if you are using if you are doing a laparoscopic surgery it should be 21010 vicral or if you are doing an open surgery 20 vicral is also in laparoscopic surgery we always take one gaze higher than the conventional so single layer 10 to 20 polygalactin so this is again a question so what suture is used 10 to 20 polygalactin suture is used so this is about the concept of bladder injury and how we manage remember if it is intraperitoneal injury you will have to go for the surgery if it is extraperitoneal yes foley's catheterization will be there so in the part 2 of this video which i'll make again and launch it for you after 2 days i'll discuss the urethral injury so i hope you're enjoying you are learning so do comment in the comment section below how you like the video what you liked about any topic that you want me to cover and also do share this video with your friends do subscribe to my channel and let the students learn with fun till then bye bye